let's face it, deep down we all want to love and please God. In our own small ways, we do the things that we think will please Him. But we also admit that we fall short in our desire to please God. No matter how much we love God, we find that our love for the world, and the things of the flesh is stronger. We try and try to break off this attraction to the things of the flesh and the world, but the harder we try get out, the deeper we get pulled into it. This leaves us miserable and frustrated. But Paul says there is a way, we must replace the bad desires with good desires. But just how are we do this, how can we take off the old and put on the new? Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. Paul says in Colossians 3 5. Put to death therefore what is earthly in you. You cannot command the fleshly desires to go away. You cannot bind the fleshly desires. You can only battle the affections of the flesh with the affections of the spirit. We need to replace the affection for bad thoughts with affection for good thoughts. The bad desires with good desires. We need the expulsive power of the Holy Spirit's affection in us. If we are going to be able to battle against the desires of the flesh. When the expulsive power of the Holy Spirit moves. The affection for the things of the world and of the devil falls away. When dead leaves appear on a tree, you do not find farmers going around removing them. The dead leaves fall off by themselves as the new shoot grows. The old leaf must give way to the new leaf. The new shoot that comes pushes off the dead as it makes room for itself. This is precisely what happened in Ephesus. When through the persistent labors of Paul, the church began to repent, the old leaves fell off. Many who had believed now came forward, confessing and disclosing their deeds, Acts 19:18. This movement of the Spirit caused believers to shed off their old leaves, and pick up new leaves. When one dead leaf falls off, it triggers other dead leaves to also fall off. When the power of the Spirit moves, people replace their idols and magic books with the Word of God. You cannot ignite such an affection through stoic philosophy, or human reasoning, mass incarceration, or holding a gun to people's heads. It can only happen when the power of the Spirit moves. This is not like transcendental meditation. Where you try to empty your mind and heart and life of every worldly desire. Rather, this is you, opening your heart wide to all of the love of God in Christ. And letting that love sweep through you and exercise its expulsive power. Until your heart is filled with love. When John says. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 John 2:15. How are we to do that? A moralist will tell you that you can displace the love of the world from your heart. By demonstrating that all that is in the world is vanity. So they tell us that once you can prove to a man that what he is chasing after is vanity. The heart of the man shifts to look for things that are worthwhile. The Christian approach is to set before man, God, as more worthy of his affection. So the man's heart exchanges the old affection he had for the world with the new affection he has for God. Look at it from the standpoint of love. A woman is in love with man A, and dots over him all her adolescent life. Even though man promises her much but delivers little. Then she meets man B, and falls in love with this new man. All her desires and affections shift from man A to man B. Such love is what at times baffles the world. So you hear people say, what does she see in man B, when man A, is better looking and richer? It is called love, and it transcends the ordinary to touch the extraordinary. So Paul says. 
Since, then, you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry, Colossians 3 1-5. So we have three things to consider. Set your heart on things above. Set your minds on things above, and then. Put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. The scriptural pattern for killing off evil desires begins by seeking and setting your eyes and heart on the permanent things above. In effect fall in love with Jesus. Revelation 2-4 says. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Paul is calling you to come back to your first love. Fall in love with Jesus. In your natural state, you will have no desire to seek and set your mind on things above. But when you fall in love with Jesus, he sheds his love in your heart. Then, as a child of God, the Holy Spirit residing in you, enables you to seek and set your heart on things above. Chris Farley said it beautifully. The best way to overcome the world is not with morality or self-discipline. Christians overcome the world by seeing the beauty and excellence of Christ. They overcome the world by seeing something more attractive than the world, Christ. Jesus said. No one can serve two masters, Matthew 6:24. We are looking at two affections here. The affection for the world, and the things of the world. And the affection for God. These two affections are not merely in a state of rivalry. But in a state of enmity, that is so irreconcilable that. They cannot dwell in the same body. And we also know that it is impossible for the heart on its own. To cast the world away from itself. The natural heart of man is not designed to undertake such an operation. The only way to dispose of an old affection is by the expulsive power of a new affection. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the only force strong enough to expel the love of the world from our hearts. And shed abroad the love of Christ in us. Paul says. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. As a Christian, Christ is your life. And this Christ who is your life will soon be revealed. And when he does, you will be revealed in glory with him. This follows that, if you are looking for his return, if you are prepared for his return, you will be motivated to live for him. Even when he delays in coming, you will wait eagerly and happily. The wait is not long or painful when you are waiting for the one you love. Bible says. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her, Genesis 29:20. 20. Love has the power of making a rough road easy, and a weary waiting time short. Love makes us do the impossible. The martyrs died amid bitter torture, with a smile on their faces and a song on their lips. Not counting their lives dear, but reckoning it an honor to spill their heart's blood, for the love they bear to him. So who we are looking for should radically impact who we are living for. You are waiting for Christ, whom you love. And so you live in such a manner that when he appears you shall be ready for him. Nothing matters more to you than to hear him say to you. Well done good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. So dear Christian, take a new look at Jesus. Focus your eyes on him, fall in love with him all over again. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. 
God bless you.